Hey everybody, how's it going? I am Seth up and welcome back to another video. Today, folks, we will be looking at the orbital supply drops. And I'm going to show you how to do the hardest ones, and that would be the purple orbital supply drops. So if you folks enjoyed this video, please do not forget to support me and the channel by hitting that like button, subscribe to the channel if you are new and haven't already. And if you have just subscribed, why not check out some of my other videos here on the channel? Who knows? You might just enjoy them. Also, for those interested in hanging out with me, you can always find me on the Sethtopia Discord. Links to this, of course, can be found down below in the video's description as well as in a pinned comment from myself. So, as I was saying, I'll be looking at the orbital supply drops. Now, for this, you need to know that they do come in different difficulties and the easiest one would be the blue orbital supply drops that is easy and just about anybody can do the next difficulty would be the yellow orbital supply drops for this i would probably suggest that you use an enforcer maybe a mech then the red orbital supply drop which is harder than the yellow one and i think a mech is recommended for this and from what I've seen, the hardest one is the purple orbital supply drop, so they come in hard and epic difficulties. Uh, the orbital supply drop in purple will have either 100,000 health or 200,000 health, depending on the difficulty. So for this, I will be showing you how to solo the purple orbital supply drop. That is that one in front of me. Now, they are quite hard. I have tried doing this with a mech and uh, failed epically. The mech cannot comprehend the difficulty of this. Plus, the biggest problem with the mech is that the wyverns seem to be able to get underneath the mech and lift the mech in the air, which is, well, doesn't make much sense. They can do that with the Titan as well, but the Titan has a great AoE. Uh, you could probably do this as a group if you want to. Um, what I would suggest is set up some turrets around the orbital supply drop. I personally prefer to uh, disable the shields because they get in the way. It's a visual glitch. And I'll show you guys in a bit what happens. Once, there we go. This is what happens so you can't see what you're actually hitting. Now I prefer the Ice Titan because of the great AoE that he has. And it is quite easy to aim with him where you want to use your attack. So I'm going to disable the shield. It gets in the way. And so what I do is I have the purple orbital supply drop in between his fists. And then I just start pounding the ground like nuts. Pretend it's a bongo drum and you're playing the bongo drum. Do not stop pounding the ground. Uh, two things to watch out for. If you get the creature's going at your ankles ignore them they don't do enough damage to the uh, Titan to be of a significant importance and if you get the enraged uh, corrupted Rexes or enraged corrupted trikes take those out first because they do a lot of damage to the orbital supply drop now the point of this is you will have waves of corrupted creatures coming towards the supply drop and you have to take them out before they destroy the orbital supply drop. One big difference between the purple supply drops and all the other supply drops is that unless you stop the, um, the waves coming in by going to disable it after five waves, I believe it is five waves, uh, they just keep on coming and coming and coming. Now, I did not know that, so I ended up doing this for about three hours with the Titan. Uh, ended up fighting off somewhere around 40 waves, and you'll see that later on in this video. So you'll have to end the orbital supply drop defense after five waves if you want to finish it. Otherwise, the waves just keep on coming. Now, when I did this the first time, I did not know that I had to do that, so I just kept on fighting and fighting and fighting. Once you have ended the orbital supply drop, if the wave has already started, you will have to finish off the wave before you can do anything to it. So, at the moment I am being called by stupid Pteranodon for no odd reason. So as you can see, I'm trying to end it now, and I'm going to be on wave 39. 
spent about three hours trying to figure out but as you can see the OSD defense complete so I think it is five waves as with the other orbital supply drops I'm not quite sure how many waves you have to defeat if anybody does know this information post it down in a comment section so this will help other players wanting to do these things of course as I said before I have tried using a mech the mech does struggle with these creatures because they are very high level as you can see they are level 523 490 stuff like that and they take a lot of damage to take down on the other hand you will get on the easier one you will get the enraged corrupt rexes corrupted rexes which are extremely hard to take down they have a ridiculous amount of health and it takes about three to five hits from a tank to take down they do a lot of damage to the orbital supply drop so you might want to also set up some turrets i don't think that is very beneficial for the stuff that you get out of this which is why i recommend a tank don't get me wrong the orbital supply drops are amazing and i do like the whole concept of it but i would probably die over and over again trying to take a titan to be able to do the higher difficulty ones now if you can't get a titan then i probably would stick to the red orbital supply drops as there seems to be very little different in terms of what you get for the effort put in um i'm going to show you what comes out of this and obviously i have to finish this last wave as you can see the titan fares quite well do bear in mind that i have pretty much done almost 40 waves at this particular orbital supply drop so my titan has lost a bit of health but that is as i said after 40 waves of creatures and you can see the difference in levels level 499 creatures 500 and so on and so forth difficult to do worth the effort i'm also going to show you what i got from the previous orbital supply drops so that you guys know what to expect from these the other good thing about the ice titan is which i discovered only with the orbital supply drops it does have a rear stomp it doesn't do as much damage as the pounding of the ground but it is good enough so actually i want to go and pick up the stuff i'm too close to the orbital supply drop so th what i'm going to do is i'm going to move my titan out of the way as when you open up the orbital supply drop it does throw the stuff out and i don't want it to be underneath the titan's hands or feet because they do have a specific time before they despawn so do bear that in mind also be careful when you do open the orbital supply drops because it throws out some panels you don't want those landing on you because they are quite glitchy you can get stuck in them so these are the things it comes out with as you can see there are some really nice things to get um i don't really want those pillars We also get a load of these pods, which <laughs> is amazing. It saves you having to craft them. Now, from what I've seen in terms of the drops, there is almost no difference between the purple orbital supply drop and the red one. They're both difficult. There you go. There you saw the tech replicator so that is how you get them and all of the orbital supply drops seem to give a tech replicator there are a lot of blueprints to come out with which are pretty neat um the other good thing about the titan is its carry weight it has a ridiculous amount of carry weight and as you can see i've already packed it full of stuff and I'm going to show you what I got from the previous orbital supply drops once I finished looting these. Uh, I picked up that. I didn't want the foundations. That sucks. They're heavy as all hell. I 
Okay, I'm a bit heavy now. Another thing to note is that they do have a despawn timer, as you've seen. So if there are stuff that you want to pick up that are too heavy, pick them up, then drop them down, and it seems to reset their despawn timer. So that gives you a few extra seconds to pick up all of the other bits and pieces. It is a good way of farming organic polymer. It is a good way of getting cementing paste as well as really good armor. Also, do bear in mind that your titan or creature will pick up a lot of primitive stuff, which will affect the amount of things that your creature will be able to carry. So I do suggest emptying that out as well, as you do want to carry all this good stuff back to your base. If you've gone through all the trouble to try and obviously do that. Now for some odd reason I've got a pesky Pteranodon who thinks it's brave. I'm not even going to bother with it. I do have God Mode enabled on myself. I did not have the God Mode enabled on the Titan as I wanted to see how it fares with the most difficult orbital supply drop and I can tell you right off the bat that this guy did not have any issues whatsoever also very important to note here is that the enforcer the titan the tech mech all seem to do increased damage to corrupted creatures very important that so now that I've cleared out my inventory of all the junk that I picked up this is what you can expect to get from the orbital supply drop now, of course, what you see in my creature's inventory is a result from multiple orbital supply drops, all of different difficulties. It is also a good way for farming the corrupt heart, as you don't have to go anywhere, as the creatures will come to you. This is after 40 waves of creatures, so this is how well the Titan has done. This is how much health it has lost. Definitely a creature to get for farming the orbital supply drops it is worth the effort for taming this guy this is probably what i'm going to be using in my gameplay to get all of this good stuff now do bear in mind the titans are not an easy task in terms of taming but it is a good creature to farm the orbital supply drops with these are all the corrupt hearts that I've got, and I have accidentally thrown quite a few stacks away. But I'm not greedy with this, as they are easy to farm. So that is it for this video, folks. I do hope that you have found the information in this video useful and have enjoyed it. If you have, please do not forget to support me and the channel by hitting that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already for more similar content. And if you have just subscribed to the channel, why not check out some of my other videos here on this channel? Who knows, you might just enjoy them. Also, for those who have just subscribed, I will be covering Fallout 76 once I cover all of the guides and how-tos for ARK. So do look forward to that, as it is a thing that's going to happen on the channel. And don't forget to hit that bell icon so that you get notified when I upload new videos on the channel. Until next time... Stay safe, folks.